Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground in this module, and don't worry if you're not exactly sure how to actually do each step of the process yet. We'll be breaking that down with a video where you'll see me doing each and every step very soon. Before we get to that, we've got to talk about one of the most important markers of the demand that we're going to use when we're researching. And that one marker is, of course, the BSR, or best seller rank of an item. In simple terms, the BSR is a numerical sales rank on Amazon that shows how well an item is selling in a category. These BSRs are updated in real time by Amazon as items sell. As a result of that, products don't have a static BSR. They're constantly moving. Generally speaking, the higher the BSR, the more volatile the movement can be. For example, if an item has a high BSR of 12,000 in home and kitchen, it could quickly move to say 15,000. Why? Because these items sell less in that category and it takes far less for those items to move than if, for example, the item had a low BSR of 200. The item would essentially have to completely stop selling for it to fall from 200 to say 12,000. So in general, the lower the BSR, the more that item is selling in a category. The reason this is important is because it gives us an indication of the demand for the item. It also allows us to filter products in or out of our research, which in simple terms means that we won't research an item that has a BSR that's beyond our accepted BSR limit, which we'll introduce to you in just a moment. A BSR is simply a part of our research strategy, but it's not the strategy. Many other systems rely solely on this number and believe that their quote unquote marketing will do the rest of the job for them. This is simply crazy. Let's talk about the BSR gray area before we jump in. You may be wondering what this is. Well, in simple terms, when we talk about BSRs, we're always asked the question, what is an acceptable BSR in every category on Amazon in each country? This is a difficult question to answer as there are so many variables in play, as well as the fact that more and more items are becoming available for sale on Amazon all the time. That said, I intend to show you how to determine whether or not an item is worth researching further by giving you a method for calculating an acceptable BSR in every category in every country. So how do we do it? So to find the BSR limit or the acceptable BSR that will indicate that an item has acceptable demand or not, you'll initially ask yourself two questions. Question one, is this item located in a primary category? And question two, what country am I researching in? Once we know the answer to each question, and I'll give you a list of top rated categories in a moment, you'll have a base BSR limit. Okay, so let's calculate our BSR limit for a product that's in a primary category. We start with the number 20,000. This is our base number that we're going to use. This is the BSR limit for the three top rated primary categories, patio, lawn and garden, sports and outdoors, and electronic accessories and supplies. These are considered the primary categories on every Amazon marketplace around the world. Now you may wonder what happens if your item is not located in a primary category. Good question, and here's what to do. We take the initial BSR base number of 20,000, and then we simply divide that by two. This will give a new BSR limit for non-primary categories. Now we haven't dealt with the impact of the country you're researching in yet, but we will do that right now. Okay, so where you're researching will affect the BSR limit that you're happy to work within. If you're researching on amazon.com, then you won't have to alter your calculations in any way. In simple terms, this means that if you're researching on amazon.com in a primary category, then the highest BSR you'll accept is 20,000. And if you're in any other country, then it will be 10,000. I don't actually recommend doing any research in the Italian, Spanish or Canadian markets as they're too small and don't contain what we deem to be reliable data. Let's take some examples so that you understand exactly what we're talking about. We'll assume in this example that our item is not located in one of the three primary categories. So we'll take our base number of 20,000 and divide that by two, giving us 10,000. Now we know we're researching Amazon UK. This means that we must take the base BSR and divide by four, giving us a new BSR limit of 2,500. This therefore means that when we're assessing viability, products within a BSR of 2,500 or less will be deemed viable. We'll also allow products that go over this number by 20%, but no more. Our next example is located in a primary category. Therefore, our base BSR is 20,000. We found this product on amazon.com. 
So we take that 20,000 and don't alter the limit. This means that products that are 20,000 or less in that category, or 20% more than the 20,000, are deemed viable. Anything over that amount is disregarded as the demand is not sufficient for us to research further. Our final example is not located in a primary category. Therefore, we take our BSR of 20,000 and divide by two, giving us a new BSR limit of 10,000. The item was found on Amazon France. As a result, we take our BSR limit and divide that by five, giving us a new BSR limit of 2,000. We will therefore only deem items with a BSR of 2,000 or less as viable in that market or 20% more than 2,000. That's it for the BSR limits. And again, don't worry, in the next video, I'm going to be going and taking you through everything that we've learnt, applying it on Amazon and showing you exactly what to do and how to do it. And all of this will be listed on our spreadsheet as well.